last episode, we had gone on our journey to Italy, and you had surprised me with results from 23andMe. Right. So this episode is all about what do we do on the follow-up of that? What happened after that happened? Welcome back to Finding Gina Marie, our video podcast about discovering family and our journey to relocate to Europe. This is episode seven. If you've missed any of our other episodes, please visit findinggenamarie.com, where you can also find ways to contact us and leave comments and just generally say hi. I'm Judy. I'm Kevin. So I got home. We got home. <laughs> she didn't leave <laughs> we me We traveled there. together. I, and I like Italy, but I like coming home <laughs> with my wife too. So, And in mid-December, I had heard from someone who was also searching for birth family who I had some connection to. And she and I shared a decent amount of DNA, but she was striking out in terms of finding anybody that was really responding to her requests. Wait a minute. So this was in December, you said? Yes. I thought you didn't. Oh, I guess it was end of November that we got back. We got back. I'm thinking, I'm thinking we got back the end of December. Oh, so so this is, so we're, we got back the. We got back. Um, no, late, November late 28, November. yeah, and okay, so November 29th, so we're just into December. I'm I'm a whole month ahead, okay. <laughs> I just realized that this potentially could be more complicated, and it also made me realize that it may not be straightforward, and I may not actually find birth family. What were you doing with the 23andMe results at that point in December? Were you digging into it more? Were you thinking about digging into more? I got that response, and... I just put a pin in it, really. Uh, We were in the height of Christmas planning and preparations, and it was a little bit easy to put aside because I'd had a chance to read through what the report had said, but I didn't really understand what to do with it. Okay, so it was still that processing. Right, and I also was even a little bit afraid. I feel like once you make a decision like this, you just don't know what to expect. And still, going back to a previous episode, my adopted mother had always told me it may not end up like Oprah, Judy. (laughs) And so in the back of my mind, I was opening up a can of worms and was just still just a little tenuous. Yeah, yeah, you can't unring that bell. It's it's once you reach out to people, now committed yourself to talking to these people. Exactly. So what was the big step that changed? Where where are we in this process? It was January 5th, and I had come across a post on Facebook, and I'm an executive assistant, and it was in one of those channels. Is it like a mentoring channel for EAs or just a discussion group? It was a discussion group. Okay. And somebody had said, oh my gosh, people, I found my full sister. Somehow or other, she found family on DNA or via DNA. And first of all, bear in mind, this was not the appropriate forum <laughs> to be discussing something like this. EA techniques of finding family. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Definitely not work related. And I remember actually responding to this person and saying, you know, good for you. And I was glad to hear it. But at the same time, I had mentioned that however she had gone about finding this person, I just didn't know that it was appropriate to basically show up on somebody's door and say, hi, I'm related to you. Is that what she did? Well, I, don't, I, don't, I honestly don't even remember. Oh, okay. and, and part of why I don't even remember is because, well, I'll explain that in a minute. So I had said, you know, that I'm adopted and that I had curiosity as well, but I just was very cautious about how I might be upending other people's lives who weren't actively potentially seeking the same information. And somebody had responded to me and said, you absolutely have a right to all of that information. That's part of who you are and you're entitled to that. I don't know that I necessarily agreed with it, but it just did give me some confidence. I wanted to go back and find that post and let whoever know that I was planning to actually reach out to my birth family. For whatever reason, probably because it wasn't posted in an appropriate forum, the administrators had deleted it. So I couldn't go back and find that same information. Right. But but anyway, it just had put maybe some renewed energy in my head. And even though I had this whole to-do list of what I wanted to do for the year, and it was already January 5th, 
And it was a Sunday. I had a million things that I wanted to get done that day. But for whatever reason, I got sidetracked. And That's shocking. You <laughs> never get sidetracked. She never gets sidetracked. This never, ever happens. Does that sound like sarcasm? This new information. This is new information. <laughs> that is brand new information. I went ahead and could see from 23andMe that there were certain people that I had a higher percentage of DNA with. Do you know what the percentage was that's high? I want to say is maybe 8% and less. Okay. I, know, I don't think there was anybody higher than 8%. I didn't know if like 50% is high or if 5% is high. You know, it's high is relative. Sure. One of the tools inside 23andMe is a messaging tool. So you can... Send a note to various people that you share DNA with, and you can ask to share results, you know, so that you can compare your DNA against theirs. But I went ahead and found the top 10 people that I had the most DNA with, and I basically sent a form letter. Hi, I'm Judy, and I am looking for my birth mother and or siblings, and I shared a couple of very basic pieces of information that I had gotten back from the non-identifying inter- information that I had done in 2013. Okay. So just very small bits, but enough that hopefully somebody could piece together maybe where I fit into the family tree. At the very end of this boilerplate message, I put a little note and said, P.S. My birth name was Gina Marie. Ta-da. <laughs> Go on, Gina Marie. Tell us the story. <laughs> At that point, I just kind of had, you know, some nervous energy about what I had just put out <laughs> into the universe. And... I was a little bit fidgety and just couldn't believe that I had done this. And I promise you not five minutes later, maybe 10 minutes, all right, but literally no more than 10 minutes later, I got a ping from someone who said, hey, basically, I think I know where you fit in the family tree. That is fast. (laughs) So fast. Honestly, my head was spinning. I I, I was not prepared for that. So then what? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, he Just had, stopped the story there. He'd, ba- <laughs> he'd basically said, what other information do you know? Let's take this out of this platform. Here's my email address and let's go back and forth. And he would do some due diligence, check around with his family. He said, I think it's maybe one of a couple of people, but let me take as much information as you can give me. It will help me to give you a more informed response. Yeah, so we went back and forth and I just this couldn't- This still the first day. This is, this is still January 5th on a Sunday. He and was very responsive with these emails. We were going back and forth like ping pong balls. Okay, okay. <laughs> it, it was just uh, super amazing. I don't know, I just had so much emotion surging through me. In fact, there was a part of me that started looking based on what his name was and- some of the information that he was giving me, which was like not very much. I had come to the concern that perhaps my mother had passed away maybe three months prior to that. I wasn't sure because of course, now that I have this tiny bit of information, I'm digging up everything that I possibly can, thinking about what I could maybe learn on my own between then and when I was going to hear from him next. You weren't absolutely sure about your last name, right? Right, yes. Some question marks about that. Yes. Okay. So at the end of the email exchange, we left it that we would be in touch the following day. That was my Sunday. (laughs) Busy Sunday. (laughs) It was a busy Sunday. And so... Of course, here you wake up on a Monday morning, work is busy, but at the same time you think, well, how early can I follow up and I don't want to be a pest. When will he possibly have information? I just know that I didn't want to be over eager, even though this is this huge life changing information about to be revealed to me, but also get my work done and keep my job. (laughs) Good. I like that. (laughs) He finally did reach out to me. I got a note at one o'clock in the afternoon and... This was on Monday or Tuesday? On Monday. Monday? And he said, time to talk soon. And I said, now it's great if it works for you. He said, I'll call soon. FaceTime okay? Yes, sure. This merits a face-to-face. And I said, to be honest, I had some trouble sleeping last night. He said, sorry, but understandable. (laughs) <laughs> and so it began. He called and we were on FaceTime. Started out the conversation by saying, you have a sister. Which, mind blown, <laughs> first of all. Because in this whole situation, honestly, 
I never really thought about siblings. Your goal was to talk to your mother and assure her that you had a great life, et cetera. Exactly. That was your, that was your focus for everything. And, and honestly, I didn't really think <laughs> about any other family, <laughs> that there was other family out there. I think I asked, is my mother still alive? And he said, oh, yes, yes, of course. So he had said that he had talked briefly with my sister and that uh, she had talked to my mother and <laughs> that he was going to give my sister my email address and she would be reaching out. My head was just moving a million miles an hour. Honestly, I just was so overwhelmed, probably in a daze as well. It was it was really, and I'll be using this word a lot, it was a very surreal experience. When this was actually happening, then you found out you had a sister. I don't know if I found that out when I was home or I, I just, it's all a blur. I don't remember any of that, but I do remember being shocked when you said, yep, yeah, my mother's still alive. And my cousin gave me this information. Oh, I have a sister. I'm like, holy crap, I didn't think of anything. I, I was the same as you. I'm like, siblings. And, and that means you've got cousins and nephews and nieces and you've got this big family out there then. Through the non-identifying information that my mother was one of five children. Right. Well, she was the sixth. Five siblings plus her. Math. <laughs> Math is hard. Math is good. <laughs> my one uncle had done a whole family history. My father's side of the family went through the whole Hochter clan and didn't really share that with much of us. And, and it was fine. I mean, it wasn't like I didn't know we had Irish German roots and I knew enough of it. I thought I knew more than I did, but I tried to use ancestry.com a couple times and it kind of dead ended on me. So when you did this and you actually got results and you actually found out real information about people that were currently your relatives, well, I guess I was surprised too that there was enough people in your birth family that had done these DNA tests. So I was super excited coming home from work that day. I remember being on the bus and just having my heart all aflutter, just having my mind go a million miles an hour and wondering what all of this meant. Because this cousin did not give me information about who my mother was or his, her name or anything like that. But he did happen to say, well, I have a whole bunch of information about family history and it's very fortuitous that you had reached out to me because I have a lot of the family tree. And so that was very cool. But I could appreciate this entire journey has been important, I think, for everybody to just be as respectful and um, coming to it at a pace that could work for everyone. Right. Because while not a proverbial knock on somebody's door saying, hey, I'm related to you. I mean, we've all seen the sitcoms where people just say, oh, I'm your daughter, you know, it's, it's, the, <laughs> right. it's the trope of surprise. Remember the girl you dated my age <laughs> years ago? I'm pretty sure when he and I had talked, he mentioned to me that my sister had known about me when she was in college. You've only talked to your cousin so far. None of this has Correct. gone past that, but you knew about this sister. So what happened after that? So that night she sent me an email and basically said, hi, I'm your half-sister. I'm sure you have a million questions. I'm happy to answer as many of them as I can. You grew up with two brothers. Was this a relief to finally know you might have female relatives that are close to you? <laughs> Interesting point. Yes, I was raised with a bunch of boy cousins and brothers and so having a sister just knocked my socks off, yeah. honestly. I mean, that was interesting to me to know that you had a sister that lived in Buffalo. Like, we grew up in the same place that your sister is now. Did your cousin give your information to your sister? Yes. So he had, must have reached out to her via email and said, that I had gotten this message from somebody who I think is related to you. And she then talked with my birth mother the next day. So it would have been Tuesday. She reached out to me via email to say that she had gotten an email and that I think one of the other <laughs> 10 emails that I had sent out had also landed somewhere. And so there was a bit of conversation amongst family members that I was out there. Ripples, waves <laughs> starting to go out into the uh, the universe. This is good gossip at least. You know, if nothing else, if nothing else comes of it, you know, <laughs> you, you made the family start to chat. Sure. My sister did mention to me that my mother had talked to her about the fact that she had released a daughter for adoption before she had married 
my sister's father. So at least I didn't come as a surprise, uh, which I think is always a little bit tricky. You said she, she talked to your mother, your birth mother. What was your mother's attitude? I think she needed some time to process it. Bear in mind, I'm 55 years old, about to be 56 that year. Right. And that's a long time to keep a secret. Really, no one in the family had known about me except for my mother's one slightly older sister So and, and her parents. So it was a time where those kinds of conversations didn't really happen. Sure. And there was an unnecessary amount of shame that was... Yeah. Tied to it, unfortunately. I, I remember back before I was born, I was the late in life child. Well, you went, you don't remember, but well, like you oh, remember no. hearing stories. I remember hearing stories. <laughs> yes, I have a fabulous memory of what I had for lunch today. Maybe. <laughs> anyway, my two sisters were both in high school, and my mother was pregnant with me, and my mother was very insistent that both my sisters, especially my older sis, oldest sister, wear tight clothes to school. You don't want anybody to think when this baby's born that it could possibly be yours. So let's be very careful about this because that would be scandal. You know, it was scandalous in the early 60s to have a child out of marriage. But I'm just glad we're not in those times anymore. Sure. But I'm, I'm just saying, you know, that your mother would still harbor some of that. I mean, all the people that knew her back then are still the people today. They're not like they suddenly became different people. It could still be a concern to her that they would have attitudes or feelings about it. Well, sure. And I think that that's where everything cracked wide open in terms of how is everybody feeling about all of this? Of course, I'm super excited, but I'm cautious. I don't know who these people are going to end up being, whether they're going to be welcoming to me or resentful. And you hadn't told anybody in on your side, your, your adopted family yet, right? I think when all of this happened, I was pretty quiet with how I shared it. So I had a range of emotions going through my head. And I also was a little bit without words, which is kind of shocking for me. <laughs> <laughs> because here my sister has said, what questions can I answer for you? And quite frankly, I didn't have a single question in my mind to ask. Because... I was kind of blown away. I was also trying to be respectful. And I came to this conversation with my sister thinking that she is basically standing in to do the due diligence to make sure I wasn't a crazy lady before <laughs> introducing me to the rest of the family. So <laughs> <laughs> she was so wrong. <laughs> Teasing boy. <laughs> Keep going. So she did explain that she had known about me and she also had mentioned that this was a lot for her to process as well. And really, we just kind of left the conversation there. I sent her a follow-up email, which she didn't respond to until the next day. And we basically went back and forth like that without really me knowing who my birth mother was yet and just trying to break open more information and understand who we each were as individuals. My sister had said, oh, one more thing before I go to bed for the night. Our mother has crooked pinkies and it's a girl thing. And I'm wondering if you have that same thing. <laughs> Honestly, it was shocking because I do have broken pinkies. I thought, what an amazing thing. In fact, my adoptive parents had offered to have them fixed. Right. But I thought that they were kind of cool and unique, made me different. And although I probably later thought, oh, I'm a typist, I should probably have, more reach. have better reach. <laughs> it was something that was unique to me. Mind blown to realize that it was also something that my... Uh, mother was, shared and my sister and I also found out that I had another sister two sisters and pinkies the genetics are strong here it was really amazing and I think a week later I got an email from my aunt she found my email address through a voiceover website that I had she had sent a note and said hi I'm your aunt and I live basically an hour away from you. Just north of Oakland. Knock me over with a, with a feather. And she then also said who my birth mother was. You know, in my heart, there was just incredible chaos and uh, excitement about who this person was. And, and it turns out that this was the sister who my mother had told about me. And she had kept this secret for 55 years. And so I ended up having a telephone conversation with this aunt. And she also mentioned that there was another aunt who lives 
literally a mile from where we live. In San Francisco. In San Francisco. Several blocks away from us. I think when you said that to me, I was freaking out. I was I was wondering, okay, what Thank are the you. odds? What? Are, of course you were freaking <laughs> out. You heard it first. But I was just amazed that here we are across the country from where we started in Buffalo, New York. You've got now two sisters you found out in Buffalo, New York, two half sisters. You have an aunt that's just across the way in north of Oakland. You have another aunt that's in San Francisco, a mile away from us. I'm thinking, what are the odds that we spent almost 30 years in Houston and we decide just a few years earlier to move to San Francisco and now the family that started off in Buffalo, because these were all Buffalonians. Right, all Buffalonians. They're, and, in, they're in the place that we are now. And what are the chances of that? And also to find out that my mother, my birth mother, also lived in California. I was trying to figure out how the universe connected all these dots and just blown away that we're that close to your birth family. And what would happen if we hadn't moved San Francisco. It also was just this string, I don't know, pulling this thread, pulling us together. And I feel like this was the perfect time, the perfect place for this all to come together, especially because the whole time we were living in Texas, our lives were really, really full. And that was one of the reasons that really I hadn't continued to pursue anything happening with finding more information about my birth family. I felt like I had a really full, busy life, and I didn't know if I had time to bring other people into it. I was barely staying afloat with kids and job and family my father and, and, your father, and, yeah. and your family. And it, it was... There was always something going on. It was not a casual lifestyle in Texas. Right. But here in California, we had an empty nest. We had some more free time. We had some more ability to just kind of digest this new information this right well and, and part of the reason even going forward was I felt like I had the space in my life to add more people to it if it would work out that way so I was ready for all of that I was very cautious about telling my adoptive family about all of this because I didn't know how all of it was going to land with them but I had some close friends and I had some work friends that I didn't have to worry about because, you know, this was just a cool story and I figured that they would appreciate it. One of the things about our culture at this particular job was that we would all stop work at the same time and eat lunch together. And so they were getting this blow by blow of this <laughs> reality show yes, right in their office. Exactly. Yes. And everybody was just so on edge. What's going to happen next? And <laughs> they were so invested in our story. And it was really cool to also be able to share it with them. All right. So now we got everybody excited. The reality show is going on here. What's next in the, the next episode? What happened next on the <laughs> reality show of Gina Marie. So my sister and I were having still daily back and forth exchanges via email, which actually is super precious now because I can look back on that history and refresh my memory. I've been known to be called a goldfish at times because sometimes, you know, I blink and I don't remember the last thing that happened. I have this body of memories that are just email exchanges, which are is super special. She would periodically say she's been communicating with, with our mother and she is has been hearing nice things about us and trying to prepare herself to connect with me. But understandably, the range of emotions and feelings that she had were going to take some time to process. While of course I understood that it may never happen that she would be ready I wanted to at least make sure to express to my sister and then to my aunt about... Just how good your life was, that you weren't upset or anything else. There was no ill will. There was no hard feelings. Right, all that. what my motivations were and what my expectations were, right. which really were... Like I had no, I really had no expectations. I had gotten a note from my sister who said, you know, I think mom is close, but she's not quite there yet. So where are we now? We're, we're near... So we're still in January, right. but... I think there's so much happening so fast. Every time I turn around, it seems like there's new information to learn about all of this. And I'm just trying to protect my heart that it may never happen for my mother to come around. I was 
on a Zoom video call with my boss and I got a phone call from somebody and that was the area that my mother lived in and my heart dropped. I don't even know if I heard the rest of the conversation that I was having with my (laughs) boss. So I had this missed call. A little while later, I saw that there was a voicemail that showed up. It basically said, hi, this is your mother. I'd love to talk to you if you'd like to call me back. (laughs) Mic drop. (laughs) It was very surreal. I was shaking and she had said, could I maybe call back around five o'clock, which actually couldn't work for me. So I think I left a voicemail. I don't know. It was it was a little bit confusing because she didn't pick up. And then I worried that maybe I had lost my window and that she had cold feet. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. And, you know, all the things that you make up in your head. <laughs> Yeah, that that maybe has no basis in fact. Did I did I blow it? I had my one little chance here, and I blew it. Yeah, so I had even sent a note to my sister because she had just said, "Mom isn't ready yet, but she will be soon." So then, when I got this call, I thought, "Well, maybe she did change her mind." And you know, I guess I just had all of these emotions pouring through my head. This is the first time you heard your mother's voice, too. Right? Yes. I mean, think about that. You you've never heard her voice, and now she's on a voicemail. Talking to you. Yeah. And then you play a little voicemail tag. You're not there yet with the on the line call. Did that happen uh, soon after that? It was January 21st. So three weeks from the start of all of this. Right. No, no. So that was was when you got the voicemail. But did you actually. I called and talked to her that day. Okay. That night. So you actually got to talk to her that night. Yes. For as long as it stretched out to be, it actually wasn't that much time for her to have processed it to reach out to me. I think when I was going through it, you know, you're preparing for the worst. So three weeks felt like a lifetime. But then once we were actually putting the dates and times and all of the chronology together, it was no time at all. Because it ended in November was the first time you got information about knowing that you had family that was DNA connected. And then by the beginning of January, you knew specifically that there were people, you had contact with cousins and then a sister and now January 21st, and here's your mother on the phone with you. Right, yep. It was also cool because my aunt who lived an hour and away had sent me pictures back and forth as well. I was able to see resemblances, which was one of the most precious, precious things. It was important to me when we had kids that hopefully they would look somewhat like me (laughs) so I could just see some connection. Growing up as an adopted child. You really don't have that. Yes. So just kind of wondering, what did my family look like? And was was a curiosity of mine. So to actually see these pictures and see where family resemblances were was just astounding. Well, we have some big stuff that happened right after that. The next step gets into some face-to-face stuff. Yes. So we'll get into that in the next episode where Gina Marie actually starts to talk to family face to face. So if you're enjoying following along with us, please give us a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. If you're listening to us from a podcast player, please leave us a review. You can find all our information on findinggenamarie.com, ways to contact us, and more information about our other episodes if you've missed any of those. We'll keep updating you there, so please visit. And until next time. Until next time. So, yes. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> so, is it yes? I yes, think it's, it's yes. yes. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> so, after the EMS... I was, I was asking you. I know. I'm trying to tell you. Okay. <laughs> so, at the end of the email exchange, we basically made... So, at the end of the email exchange, we basically... I don't want to say basically. Sorry. Sorry. Basically. <laughs> basically, we basically did something. So, at the end of the email exchange, basically. we agreed... <laughs> Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs>